As we've already learned from studying scripture, the Roman Catholic Church is the prophesied harlot of Revelation 17, and the papacy is indeed the first beast of Revelation 13. There is a lot of strange teachings and interpretations of scriptures out there. Most of the teachers look at prophecy and have the inherent need to apply every evil thing we read about to our current time. They apply everything to us, now, in this present moment in time. They don't understand that the revelation was an unfolding of the true and false church development from the time of the first century. As much as we'd like to think it is, it's not always about us. We, in this present time, are not always in the spotlight. We need to drop the ego that says we represent all of Christ's church because the church of Christ was on earth long before we ever got here. His church, which spans centuries, has been and is in great tribulation as the world has never seen. We have investigated some marvelous fulfilled prophecies of our Lord and how they came true exactly as stated. If we take the mark of the beast as an example and insist it must be a high-tech device which was only made possible in the last few decades, that means we must scrap all the fulfilled prophecies we studied because the mark of the beast wasn't technologically available yet. It means the mark is only for those in high-tech countries and the billions who live in third world countries are excluded. Believe it or not, there are people in the world without cell phones, iPods, televisions, and even radios. Yet everyone outside of biblical Christianity will get an electronic subdermal implant? I don't think so. So if we get it into our heads that it's not always about us, let's look at scripture and history to see what we come up with. Under the papacy, an estimated 50 million Protestant Christians lost their lives during the 1260 years of its political supremacy. When the true Christian church and various reformer groups realized and taught that the papal dynasty was none other than the prophesied man of sin, Antichrist, the revived head of the beast, the result was exactly as Revelation 13.7 foretold. Let's look at some quick examples. In 1179, Pope Alexander III commanded that the Waldenses be exterminated. Philip, the king of France, burned the towns to the ground. The reformers were burned alive at the stake, some were exiled, and their land and goods were confiscated by the Roman priests. In 1198, Pope Innocent III commenced a systematic wholesale slaughter of the Albigenses and promised the reward of paradise to all who joined in the so-called crusaders who murdered tens of thousands of Christians. When the town of Béziers was taken in southern France in 1208, 60,000 men, women, and children were butchered. This same pope in 1206 caused the establishment of the Inquisition. The priests served as judge throughout all of Europe. On the slightest pretext of heresy, which could mean simply owning a Bible in the native tongue, people were forced to endure mock trials. Hundreds and thousands of Christians were condemned to suffer terrible tortures. Who has not heard of the terrible Spanish Inquisition? That was the papacy. In 1567, the Duke of Alva was commanded to destroy the Protestants in the Netherlands. In less than six years, he put to death 18,000 Christians by the sword, rack, and flames. We've already studied the French Revolution with the outpouring of the first vial. 60,000 Protestants in France were killed, commencing with the massacre of St. Bartholomew's Eve. All who lived in the prophetic Roman earth did worship the Pope and obeyed his every decree, except those who were truly born again and had their names written in the book of life. We are warned to take heed. The Lord will not let the beast and those who carry out his commands go unpunished. It is a historical fact that Europe paid very heavily during the French Revolution, Napoleonic Wars, the Prussian Wars, and the Two World Wars. The present and continual devourment of the beast system will continue until Christ destroys what is left when he returns. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The beast we identify through the prophetic scripture is the entire dynasty of popes. Now we see another beast arise in Revelation 13. This time the beast is coming out of the earth, but very closely associated to the papacy. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, 
and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Once again, this earth is the Roman earth, the area which comprised the old Roman Empire. The Pope, with all of his claims, would have no power if he did not have the political strength and the support of the Roman earth. The beast from the earth is therefore none else than the nations of Europe which submitted their political, economical, and military strength to the papacy. The Roman Catholic Church, Babylon Ecclesiastical, was carried on the back of the nations of Europe, Babylon Political, the beast out of the earth. Thus we see the two crossed keys emblazoned on the papal flag to this day, the spiritual and the temporal powers. In Revelation 17, this is portrayed as the woman drunken with the blood of the saints astride the beast. All of the nations of Europe that gave their allegiance to the Pope, the East Germans under Charlemagne, were the strongest. They soon subdued the rest of Germany and then forced, by the sword and fire, all of continental Europe to obey the Roman Catholic Church, which came to own almost all of Europe. The Pope became so powerful with the backing of the beast of the earth that even the kings of Europe humbly received their crowns out of his hand. If they had not met with his approval, they just remained uncrowned for as long as the Pope desired. The beast that came out of the earth looked like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. The Lord Jesus warned us, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Doesn't Rome always talk about peace? You're not a heretic now, but a separated brother. Peace and love and harmony. Oh, like a woolly little lamb, but with the horns of a dragon. Because when the wool is pulled aside, the real system is revealed. God pinpoints everything beautifully. You see, when a priest of Rome is elevated to be a bishop, he gets something special to wear. Did you know that? They get something which is called a pallium. It is a shawl that is draped over the shoulders, and it's made of lamb's wool. These are special lambs raised on farms outside of Rome, specifically for this purpose. The wool is cut at a certain time of year, and the Pope blesses them. The little nuns weave the wool into these palliums that have been embroidered with little gold crosses, looking like a little lamb, but the horns of a dragon and a vile persecuting spirit within. The beast from the earth with its armies and political power now had the blessing of the Pope and his system, and forced all the inhabitants of the known earth to worship the Pope. The Pope thus sat in the very seat of pagan imperialism, but as far as the people were concerned, he sat in the temple of God, which is the spiritual temple, or church, and he sat there as a god. Thus the popes fulfilled the prophecy of Second Thessalonians 2 concerning the man of sin. The pope was lord over life and death to these poor captive souls for over 1,000 years. This revealed image was the whole system of Roman Catholicism from the pope downwards that had to be obeyed absolutely. All of the people who contested the power of the papacy were put to death. The priests of Rome handed them over to the secular arm for execution. This beast system, being false, could not command literal divine fire from heaven, but its priests claimed power to bring God's judgment down upon the disobedient. The simple people were deceived by statues that shed artificial tears, statues that moved or bled. The entire system was covered in deep superstition. Even to this day, the Pope has enough good work merits to release every soul from the fiery torment of purgatory, yet he does not. He keeps control of the adherents by fear, intimidation, mind control, and secrecy. It's the mystery of the system. It's Mystery Babylon.